Hello there, and welcome to our virtual tour of the historic St. Mary City waterfront and the Maryland Dove. My name is Marley Putnam, and I'm the site supervisor for the waterfront down here. And now our museum itself, Historic St. Mary City, we're located in Maryland and we're made up of four living history sites that interpret the story and the history of Maryland's first capital, St. Mary City. Now here at the waterfront specifically, we use our 40 ton pinnace, the Maryland Dove, and our surrounding waterfront area to interpret the voyage of the Ark and the Dove that the Calverts chartered to come over here and establish the colony in 1634. And now our 40 ton pinnace, the Maryland Dove, she's not an exact replica of the original Dove. Um, and that's because we don't know exactly what she looked like. All we know about the original Dove is that Father Andrew White, a Jesuit priest that came over aboard the Ark and narr um, provided a narrative, narrative of the entire voyage over, he was the one that described her as a 40 ton pinnace. We also know she was meant to get across the Atlantic and then stay here to do intercoastal trading up, up north and down south for the Maryland colony. And so we can't call her a replica. She's representative of a mid-sized merchant vessel from the 17th century. And on that note, I'd like to take you down the dock. We'll meet the crew, we'll tour the ship, and we'll learn about the history of the Ark and the Dove. Um, they left in November of 1633 from England and arrived here in 1634, starting the fourth English colony in the New World. So come on down. And so our ship, the Maryland Dove here, she was built in 1978. She was built in Cambridge, Maryland by Jim Richardson, a local shipwright. And she was designed by Naval architect William Baker. Good day, welcome aboard the Maryland Dove. I am Jeremy Hever on the ship's bosun. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the history of the settlement of the fourth permanent English colony in the new world, St. Mary City, Maryland. So November 22nd, 1633, two ships leave Cowles on the Isle of Wight uh, to establish a colony here under the proprietorship of Cecil Calvert II, Lord Baltimore. They are called the Ark and the Dove. This is a good visual representation to show you the size difference. That's the Dove at 40 tons, the size of the Maryland Dove. This is the Ark at 400 tons. Now they have two different jobs. The Ark is hired to carry all the people and all the supplies. We call it a moving truck and charter bus. The Dove is owned by the investors, brought over to serve the colony's needs once established. That's the company van. Total sailing time to get from England to the bay is 66 days. The longest stretch there at sea is 42, and that is from the Isle of Wight into Barbados. After that, island hopping through the Caribbean, up the coast, they enter the bay on or about the 22nd of February, 1634. They spend about a week in Virginia, where they hire a translator by the name of Henry Fleet, purchase some livestock, maybe a skiff or two, and then sail up the Potomac River to make first landfall in Maryland at St. Clement's Island, which is about 15 miles from where I'm standing right now. St. Clement's serves as a hotel while they're house hunting. The Ark disembarks all the passengers. They make camp on the island. The gentlemen get on the Dove, start exploring the surrounding waters and negotiating with the indigenous population. So after about three weeks of negotiations, they strike a mutually beneficial deal with the Yakamako tribe here at St. Mary's, where they purchase an existing village and about 30 miles of land. Take possession on the 25th of March, 1634, Maryland is born. In May, the Ark goes home. We know she got back to uh, England in August. After that, we don't know anything about her. We lose the Ark to history. The Dove is used locally by the colony for about 18 months, including a trade mission up to Boston in the summer of 1634, carrying a load of corn from the first harvest at St. Mary's to trade for salt cod and other commodities. About a year after that, in August of 1635, the Dove is loaded with beaver pelts and timber, sent off to England to sell for profit, but unfortunately she is never heard from again. So in all likelihood lost at sea in August or September of 1635, giving her an 18 month career in Maryland. Our ship is 42. We're doing a little bit better longevity wise. And she is a fully functioning barked rig vessel that we do sail once or twice a month to exercise ship or crew, maintains our skill sets and helps keep the old girl working well. And then we do a couple outreaches every year to other ports in Maryland to go show her off, to bring the history of the colony to other pe people in Maryland. We're standing on the main deck of the Maryland Dove where all the work gets done. Below decks, there are three distinct spaces. From here forward is a space called the Folksel. That is my bosun's locker or repair locker for the ship. So everything I would need to keep my ship functioning while crossing the Atlantic Ocean is stowed in there. It gets pretty crowded pretty fast when you're talking a couple thousand feet of line, a full suite of sails, all my tools, etc., etc. From this edge back towards the quarterdeck rise is the cargo hold. That's where we hold cargo. Now in the 17th century, ships are coming from England carrying manufactured goods to be traded for the tobacco grown here in the colony. 
The entire economy here is based on tobacco. Everybody is growing it. Nobody is building tables and chairs and shirts and shoes and all that stuff. All that gets imported from England. Now back aft is the cabin. Through the companionway, there are two cabins. There is a great cabin for the crew. We, have, we would have a crew of nine total on this ship, a master and eight sailors. Eight sailors are sharing the great cabin, and then behind the great cabin is the master's cabin, and he has got that all to himself. It's good to be the boss. Now, I'd like to turn you over to one of, our, one of my shipmates, Kenny, on the quarter deck, who's going to talk a little bit about how we operate the vessel. Hello, my name is Kenny Faison, and I'm a deckhand here on the Maryland Dove. And today, I'm going to be talking to you about the quarter deck. Now, the quarter deck gets its name because it is roughly one quarter length of the entire ship. And the main activities that are going to be happening up here are your steering, navigating, and gunnery. First, I would like to talk to you about our ship's main steering mechanism, the tiller. Now, when most people come aboard our ship, they're expecting to see a very large ship's wheel. However, the ship's wheel hasn't been invented yet in the 1630s. The first evidence of a ship's wheel found in documentation was not until 1703, and the first physical evidence of a ship's wheel was not found until 1718. So, our ship's tiller works the same as it does on many small sailing boats. Depending on the direction you want to go in, you just simply move your tiller in the opposite direction. This job would mainly fall under the purview of the helmsman. In addition to the helmsman, the navigator would also be found on the quarter deck. So the navigator was going to be housing all of his navigational tools in this piece of furniture right here, known as a binnacle. Some of the navigational tools they would be using at this time would be compass, your compass, your astrolabe, and even your nautical charts. It was very important for the helmsman and the navigator to have an effective line of communication because if they could effectively communicate with each other, they were then going to success be able to successfully navigate all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. And speaking of successful communication, our ship's one pound swivel gun would be mainly used to communicate with other vessels as well as when you are entering or exiting a port. Now, mm -hmm. our breech loaders are require a breech mug in order to be fired. So what was going to be happening was they were going to take a breech mug and they were going to load it with gunpowder, a shot if it was needed, and oakum and pack it very tightly. Once your shot is packed in tight, you would then load your breech mug into the breech of the cannon and then a slow match was required in order for it to be fired. Now, the key to the, doing this successfully would be in how you pack your breech mug. The tighter the pack, the louder the bang. And for the sake of going out with a bang, let's see how this works. Welcome, my name is Mary Luz Ramon Gonzalez, and I am a deckhand and cook on the Maryland Dove. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the below spaces on the ship. The first space that I want to talk to you about is the forecastle. It's up forward, and what we use the forecastle as is the bosun's locker. The bosun on the ship is the man who's in charge of making sure that the ship doesn't sink. So he's going to keep all of his tools and supplies that he needs to do his job up in this area. Now, on other ships, that's where the uh, sailors would have slept, but on, the, on our ship, and with our size of crew, we can't justify that. So we just use it as the bosun's locker. The next area that I want to talk to you about is the cargo hold. The cargo hold is the largest area on the ship. This is the money maker of the ship. So since the, Mar the original Dove was used as a trading vessel, um, it would try to pack as much stuff into their cargo hold as possible. Now back in those days, the cargo hold would have looked much different. Right. First off, it would have been completely sealed. There would not have been any openings to the forecastle or to the great cabin. And there would not have been any stairs down here or a floor. Okay. The ceiling planks, which are these planks right here on the inside of the hold, would go all the way down to the keelson. And that would separate your cargo from your bilge water so that your cargo didn't get wet. Okay. And then the hatch would be completely planked over um, so that rain wouldn't get in, or your sailors, okay? Because if sailors had sticky fingers, some of your cargo could go missing. Uh, the next area that I want to talk to you about is the great cabin. Now this compartment here is called the great cabin, and this is where the sailors would have slept. 
Now we have four bunks in here, and they're six and a half feet long by two and a half feet wide, more than enough space for the average height of sailors back in the 1600s. Um, but there's only four bunks, but that's okay, because with our crew of nine, um, they would be hot bunking or trading off at the end of their watches to go to sleep. The last compartment in down below is the master's cabin. This is where the master comes in to rest and to do all his calculations for his navigation. It's the only private room on the ship. It does have doors, they do close. And it's pretty nice in here. Lots of finery that the other sailors wouldn't have. Well, that concludes the end of our below decks tours. So why don't we go up to the main deck and join the rest of the crew? Well, thanks guys for coming on our virtual tour of the Maryland Dove and her surrounding waterfront. We hope you enjoyed it, learned a lot, and maybe we'll see you out here in person sometime.